Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, thank you so very much for joining me and welcome to my channel. So before I get started today, this is going to be a, a really good video, especially for beginners. Um, before I get started with it, however, I want to talk to you about February, Charlotte, North Carolina, Canela Sirocco and myself will be there teaching fluid art classes, such as Dutch pours, blooms, and I myself will be teaching a resin class. And what that will entail is I'm going to teach you how to do a perfect top coat on your acrylic pour paintings. And we are also going to make a beautiful resin ocean. So, very important. Starting December 1st, through the 15th, we are having a Christmas sale on the class, $50 off. If you're interested in learning more information about that class, please email fluidartescape at gmail.com. You know, this one we're really excited about because we're actually going to be staying in a hotel. And what that means, unlike last time, is we're going to be able to go out and have lunch with you, come down and have breakfast with us. It's going to be a very inviting, very friendly, fun-filled atmosphere, and I hope to meet some of you there. Florida was so, so much fun. It was so amazing hanging out. So many of the ladies and gentlemen that took the class made friends with each other, and they're friends now, and it was just a really great, really awesome experience. So, more information on that, email fluidartescape at gmail.com, and we will get you out all of the information. Again, it's for two weeks only, beginning December 1st, and hey, it's Christmas time. Ask your loved ones to send you to North Carolina to, to paint with us. All right, so that's it for that subject. Now on to today's video. So over the last four years, I have been a teacher on YouTube trying to communicate with you through a screen how to mix paints to do acrylic pouring. Although challenging, I have tried everything in my power to come up with ways to really teach you how to do this because I believe in the power of positivity and, and what it brings into my life so much that I want those out there that may be bored, maybe stressed, maybe deal with depression like I do, to be able to do this. So my number one goal with this channel has always been just to teach you. And the ways that I have done that have been, I've tried to show you exact measurements on the paints that I'm using. I've done, ran the whole gamut of paint lines and techniques and showing you this much of this and this much of that. And people, I promise you, measuring is, is I'm not going to say possibly making it harder for you, but it, it's not necessary. And I need to somehow translate that to you through this screen right now so that you are able to do this. So what I want to do today is prove to you how measuring cannot be exact. So when you watch all of our videos and we tell you I'm using exactly this much in this brand and this much in that brand, unless you get those same exact brands, same exact colors, it's never going to be identical. That's why this guy right here can be a huge help. And what this guy does is it translates to you through the monitor how thick my paints are. And I'm going to talk about that and try to help you as much as I can. Before I get to this, though, let's bust the myth about measuring. Art Busters presents the myth of measurements. So here on my scale, I have two paints from the same exact company, 
same exact opacity, so they are both semi-transparent colors. This blue-black indigo, I will tell you right now, is going to take more product to thin down than this, even though they are the exact same brand, same opacity. It's made a different way. Different colors have more density to them than others do. So if you see a video that says you're going to mix your opaque paints to this measurement and semi-opaque to this or semi-transparent to this measurement, it's not necessarily true because what are you going to do at home? You're going to say, I was told to use an ounce of Floetrol and a half an ounce of water for an opaque paint. So what are you going to do? You're going to go grab an opaque paint of any brand, of any color, whereas the artist that was in the video is using a specific brand and a uh, specific opacity color. Unless you find a video where they are using same exact brands and colors that you want to use for your painting you're doing that day, the measuring is not going to be the same. So let me show you. I have my scale out because we're going to be exact because I need to be exact to prove that it's not exact. So let's see here. We want to go on to, we'll leave it at grams, I guess. I don't know what everybody's, well, you know, we're in America and we don't use grams in America. Usually we use ounces. So let's go with the ounces. If you're somewhere that uses grams, just go on to Google and convert ounces to grams. Okay. And then you'll have your, your numbers. But again, I'm doing this to prove that you don't have to do it. So we're going to tear this out to make it zero. And I'm going to put into this cup 0.25 ounces or a quarter ounce of paint. This is the blue black. All right, exactly 0.25. See that? Now I have a fresh cup on there. Scale is back at zero. 0.25 of the cobalt turquoise light. Which is definitely not mixed together. Separated in the tube. So I'll mix it together in a cup. But I want you to see that I have exactly 0.25 in there again. There you go. 0.25. Okay, just mix that back together off screen. Sometimes when you're sitting around, you got to kind of mix them around in the tube. They'll separate. So anyway, they both have the same amount of paint in them. So now here's American Floetrol. I'm going to add double the amount of that. Or actually, you know what? Let me just do one part. So we're going to put in 0.25 ounces of Floetrol. Well, we got to point 30. That's okay. We'll do point 30 on the blue black also. I wanted to try to get it right at, at um third uh 25, but it didn't work, so we went a little bit over, which is fine. We'll just and yes, it was back at zero this time. All right. Almost there. There we go, right at point 30. Okay, so they both have the same amount of product in them between paint and Floetrol. We're going to mix them together. Mix this one first. Whenever you're mixing products into your paint, 
you want to mix those products in first before you start adding water to give it a chance to bind to the acrylic paint, okay? So now we'll mix it into the blue-black, just like so. All righty. We're going to remove the sticks. Actually, we don't have to do that. We're going to start measuring the water now, okay? We're going to start with this here cobalt teal light or whatever it's called. We're going to tear it. Let's start with 0.10 of water because it'll need at least that much. Or maybe we'll start at 0.5. No, we went to 0.10. <laughs> All right, I'm going to mix it up. We'll put in another 10, so we're going to bring it up to 20. All right, we're at 20.20. We're going to add another five. That is a good consistency for acrylic pouring, okay? For a majority of the acrylic pouring techniques. All except the bloom, the Dutch pour, and the pearl cell technique. So all your flip cups, your swipes, all that good consistency. And it took, what was it, 25? Let's see. It was, I believe, 25. I'll put it on the screen when I do the editing. Because now I can't remember. <laughs> I believe it was 25. So now we're going to put this back on. Tear it. So let's put in 25 into this color right here. Because they're both opaque paints, they should both take the same amount, right? Since they're both opaque and both the same brand. And I believe it was 25. I hope it was 25. All right, there's 25. So we'll give it a mix. And now this one is still much thicker than the teal, the cobalt turquoise, I mean. So what I'll do is I'll prove that to you with my little chart here. I'm going to put a little dot of color here. just inside that circle and let it spread out. Same with this color here. Let it spread out, all right? I'm gonna pick this up and count to five, and I want you to pay attention to the puddle of paint, or puddles of paint. One, two, three, four, five. So there you go. There is your proof that there is no exact measurements, okay? Myth busted. So now you're going to say to yourself, okay, well, how the heck do I do this the right way? Here's how I'm going to tell you to do it. And this goes for all techniques, no matter what products you're using, whether it's the bloom technique, the funnel, uh, funnel pour flip cups, whatever, all right? You know what recipe you're going to use ahead of time. So we'll use the bloom technique for an example. You know you're going to use an untinted house paint and a, and a varnish mixed together to make a pouring medium. You're going to then take that pouring medium and add it to your colors, right? 
So when you're making that pouring medium, whatever size container you are using, whether it be a small one or a big one, you want to take your, your house paint that is untinted and fill your container up about 75% of the way and then a little under 25% of the way with the varnish because you want to leave room to, to mix the two together, all right? You're going to then take that product. You're going to put some paint in a cup. About a, uh, If you're making little cups worth like this, about a tablespoon worth of paint. You're going to put about two times as much of your pouring medium that you made. And then you're going to add water until you get it to the right consistency. And the way you know what the right consistency is for all acrylic pour techniques is by watching the video I have in the description in which I showed you how to use this chart and I showed you the exact numbers that the paint should slide to when you're doing those techniques. And I will tell you really quick, for the bloom technique, you want that number to the paint to slide between a one and a two. Anywhere in that area is a good consistency for your bloom paintings. Down to three will still work, but you're starting to risk the chance of your cells not, or your lacing not staying together. Dutch pour, you want to get it anywhere between a four and a six. Perfect consistency. Um, the pearl cell technique, you want to get it down to between uh, probably about a seven is a good range. Seven and eight, okay? Eight being the thinnest. All other techniques that I did not just name, such as the funnels and the flip cups, you want them to be at about a three, okay? So if you're struggling with consistency, I implore you to watch that video in the description. There's a link in that video that allows you to print these out for free. Make some copies of it. Uh, people ask me about laminating it. Go ahead and laminate it if you want and reuse the same one over and over. I did test it and the paints slide a tiny, tiny bit faster, but nothing that's going to make a difference in the outcome of your painting. So this is why I always tell you that consistency doesn't matter. All right. So if I was doing a regular pour today and I wanted my paints to get to this consistency right here, a number three, about a number three. Here's how I mix. This is Tammy's mixing. And this goes for all brands, all colors, no matter what I'm using for a pouring medium. All right. Just use, use a little common sense when it comes to the ingredients. Floetrol is not that expensive and paint is. So use less paint, more Floetrol. Pouring medium is expensive and so is paint. So use a little paint, a little pouring medium, and more water, okay? Or substitute that volume by using some Floetrol with it. But here's how Tammy does 99% of her pours. She squeezes some paint in a cup. See, I don't measure. I don't know how much that is, okay? And you've seen my paintings. You've seen them dry. You've seen me auction them, all resined and beautiful, um, you know, no measuring involved. I want a whole cup of paint. I'm going to dump in enough flow trial to, you know, get me three quarters of the way. I'll leave some room for mixing. Take a stick. Mix that up quick. Squirt in some water. You want to go slower with the water if you're not sure how thin it should be and you're going to be using one of those charts. Just do a little at a time. All right. And it's nowhere near that consistency. My goal 
is it's is to make it the same consistency as this one right here. So I'll keep adding water until it gets to be the same. I can tell by the feel of it, by the way it looks when it flows off the stick, and by using my consistency chart that they are in the same range, okay? And I will show you that as soon as I get it thinned enough here. But you see this blue-black takes a lot of water, and that's because of how it's made. Again, different colors have different, you know, weights to them, different densities. They're made different with different minerals and all that. I don't know the scientific terms, but... So I'm looking at this flow off the stick, and I'm judging it by the, the mound it's leaving on the surface and the feel of it. Same thing here. Mound is still a little too thick. So I'll add a little more water. And now what I'll do is I'll test them to see if they're close enough. When I say exact measurements don't matter, that also means that if these two paints fall at a different rate, but they're similar, very close, it will be fine, okay? So, let's test them out and see just how close they are. Now, I know I went outside the, the circle there, so I'll make a puddle about the same size. That one's a little bit bigger. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so that one's at a three. That one's almost down to a four. So a little tiny more water into this one. The reason why we want to count to five is it gives the paint enough time to get to where it needs to go, okay? All right. One, two, three, four, five. That one's traveling a little bit quicker. Now we can't look at these ones here. That's not a fair test. Now here's, here's the thing though. Once you've, you've done this and they match, the most important thing for you to do at that point is to memorize what this paint feels and looks like so you don't have to use this all the time. You know, once you remember what it looks like, and you see that it works for that pour that you're doing, you don't have to use this chart. This is just to get you started to know what it should feel and look like. After that, you should be memorizing what it feels and looks like when it flows off the stick. It's very hard to get that same exact size. <laughs> I feel like that's still not even. All right. One, two, three, four, five. So it still needs a little more water. And this is really proving my theory about how measuring is just, it's just not a, a true thing you know let's get another piece of uh consistency paper out now personally i'm going to tell you something personally i would do a pour with those being different like that because they're not this one isn't all the way down here and this one's up here they're in the same ballpark as they were over here you know a uh, one number difference you're going to be okay trust me with any of the pours the pearl Pearl, the, the bloom, Dutch pour, you'll be able to blow the paints whether they're on a four or a five. All right. 
And in that video, I explain all of this to you. The most important part of acrylic pouring is tilting enough of that paint off of the canvas or blowing it off so that you don't have a big, deep puddle of it. One, two, three, four, five. All right, now, now we're in pretty much the same zone. You know, this one can be going a little bit faster because there was a little bit more paint, but you saw them flow really at the same rate. So that's what you're looking for. That's going to fix your problems, not using exact measurements, if you're having problems, that is. So please, watch that video in the description if you have any questions about this chart, about the different techniques. I have so many learning tutorials on my channel. I have over 500 videos, I think, at least 400. There's a Back to Basics Beginners playlist that you can go to that goes over recipes, so, so many different videos on my channel. Resin, mixed media, all learning tutorials because I love to teach, I love to talk, and I love to help. So today we learned that measurements can be used as a general guide, but shouldn't really be taken as gospel. Use this chart to adjust your paints accordingly, and most importantly, have fun with this. And now to end this video, let me tell you why it is important for me to do this video for you. You may have noticed the last couple of weeks, I've really sounded like crap. I've had a cold and it wasn't COVID, but it didn't want to go away. I'm still congested. I also have been battling a skin issue. Um, you'll notice in a lot of the videos, I'm wearing this bandage here on my, my arm. That's because I was diagnosed with skin cancer. So I had to have a big chunk of my wrist taken out. Well, maybe I exaggerate. <laughs> a chunk. And, you know, I have sutures and all of that. So I have been a mess with all of that. But I went for a, you know, full check over. I'm clean. They got rid of it. So sunscreen and... Maybe a little healthier lifestyle now, but the reason why I bring this up is because without this acrylic pouring or art or you, my life would be just a mess. So I want to thank you for joining me. I more importantly want to thank you for all your lovely comments that I have not been able to respond to because I'm not supposed to be typing. I'm really not supposed to be doing art either, but I think I would really lose it if I couldn't do that. So I'm kind of cheating, but I want to tell you I am reading all of your comments. I love them. I want to thank you for the donations to those that sent in some donations. You have truly been the light of my life, and I love you all for it. So with that being said, I realize this is an art video. I'm going to include a small clip of a little piece I did, and I hope you enjoy it. I love you all, and until the next time, happy pouring. The wonders of life got the prettiest side. For everyone to enjoy Standing up close by the Christmas tree Glimmering light, I am right where I wanna be I will be home for a couple of days Wander around with you You and me in the cold, thought it'd never be true Wherever I go, I got you Oh, I have stopped running, there is no way trying you better loosen your belt Drinking out wine by the fire Don't care of anything else It's 
Christmas And some kind of love, my friend I pray it will never end Do you like to be here too? It's Christmas And outside snow's glistening It's just you and me tonight I'll spend all this Christmas with you Oh, it's such a charm Got you up in my arm There's nobody at the door You said I wish this will never be over Darling, it's time for your present Come over here Now it is time to get out in the snow Lighting a light with you Choirs will sing and the joy bells will ring Nobody loves you as much as I do It's a wonderful feeling from floor to the ceiling It is that time of the year Drinking hot wine by the fire Here on our own we got nothing to fear It's Christmas And some kind of love, my friend Pick up some candy canes and hang a wreath on your door It's Christmas and outside snow's glistening It's just you and me tonight It's just you and me tonight It's just you and me tonight I'll spend all this Christmas with you All of the colors and products that I used to make this painting will be listed in the description below. I want to thank you for joining me and make sure you check out Fazia Creations on TikTok. Also in the description of this video are the links to follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. You can also join our group, United We Pour Fluid Art Group on Facebook. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like. If you're new, please subscribe and have a great night.